clouds using landmarks. So as, as I said before, the things are simple, but uh, you cannot make them too simple or your algorithm becomes incorrect. And actually it's a sort of, I think, property of A-star search. Even a journal of ACM has two papers at some point uh, way back in the 80s, I think, by some AI guys, and the second paper corrects the mistake of the first paper. Uh, so even in a very good refereed journal, uh, there were things published which were not correct because this, uh, these things are a little tricky, you have to be uh, careful. Okay, oh, and shortcuts, of course, since they correspond to original paths in the graph, they don't affect uh, landmark distances and bounds. Okay, so this is reach with shortcut, and you, as you see, you sort of don't go back as much uh, as before, and so you are sort of sparsified and directed. And in terms of <laughs> running times, you get, again, uh, improvement. Well, here the preprocessing is the sum of these two preprocessing times, and uh, you do pay, uh, you have to pay more for uh, in storage, but you get really, really uh, fast queries and you visit very, very few vertices. Okay, and I'll give some data for bigger graphs. So this is the 30 million vertex graph of uh, North America road network, which includes U.S., Canada, and parts of some roads of, in Mexico. And so here, running reach computation is just impractical, exact reach computation. Uh, the RE algorithm, which is a reach with shortest pass, it's quite practical. And if you sort of combine all of this, uh, you have reasonable uh, preprocessing and uh, <coughs> space overhead, and you sort of uh, find the shortest path getting you know, one or two uh, thousand vertices on the average, even though this is a 30 million graph. And this is for random queries, so Dijkstra's algorithm will visit roughly by directional al Dijkstra's algorithm, which will visit roughly half of the graph. So like 15 million nodes, and you are visiting only 1,500 nodes. <coughs> so it's uh, several orders of magnitude faster, and it's not that bad in sort of the bad case, and even the worst case is less than 10,000 vertices. Uh, and this is just a few milliseconds. Uh, there are some further improvements. Uh, so first of all, uh, most of the search is done on high reach vertices. So only initially you look at low reach vertices. So uh, what you can do is, uh, uh, remember you're paying a lot for storing lots of landmark data. You can store landmark data only for high reach vertices. Okay? Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, you, you save a lot of uh, space. And for low, you, uh, for low reach vertices, you have to uh, get some lower bounds. And to do this, you'll store the closest high reach vertex. And then you have not a triangle, but uh, some, some more complicated polygon. But you still can use triangle inequality to get uh, lower bounds. They will not be quite as precise. But since only very little of search involves low reach vertices, you don't worry about it too much. Uh, and then, in fact, uh, if you freed up a lot of space uh, by uh, storing only 120s of uh, landmark data, you can actually have you know, four times more landmarks. And you still uh, win more win in space compared to the original. And it turns out that you also win in time if you tune things right. So you can have more landmarks, uh, but store landmark distances only to uh, high reach vertices, and you win in space and in time. Uh, and also, it turns out that if you sort your vertices by reach, you get more locality. Because uh, except initially, your computation visits only high reach vertices. And there, there are a small number of them, so they will be all cached, or most of them will be cached. And uh, things speed up uh, this way. And so uh, you get, uh, compared to the previous data, you get about one millisecond here on the server. And 
uh, you get a few second time on a pocket PC device. Uh, so this is all uh, quite practical and this is for random queries when points are expected to be far away from each other. For local queries, which most of queries are, you want to go you know, from one part of Moscow to another or something like this, it's of course faster. Okay, so I think this I already talked about. There's just a notation. So, a real algorithm, remember, it's the algorithm which combines uh, reach and uh, landmarks. And real IJ is when you have I landmarks and you store distances to uh, one o over J fraction of vertices. Uh, and if you, <coughs> as I understood, you have uh, top level landmarks and then you have uh, top reach vertices. And then uh, for low reach vertices, you first go to next uh, higher reach vertices and then to the landmark. And why, if you make this hierarchy, why? choose landmarks. Why not uh, from the beginning have a few levels of uh, high, the highest reach and the second uh, level reach, the third level reach. And then... Uh, no, no, you, uh, sorry, you, uh, so, suppose this is a vertex and this is some landmark. Uh, and this is the closest high reach vertex. Yeah. So this is V, this is, uh, let's say, P proxy V, and this is landmark L. We are using this vertex only to compute lower bounds. So we see that we didn't store distances to this landmark. Yes, I see. So I understand. But mm, <coughs> you, you say about uh, lo local, uh, local searches and uh, far away searches. And, the, and so for high reach vertices. You have, said you have to store distances to the landmark, but if you run lo the localized search, you do not use landmarks at all, and you cannot use them. No, no, we are using landmarks. We are using landmarks to compute lower bounds. Yes. And so for this vertex, we don't store landmark distance, so no. we use the lower, but we know this distance. And we know this distance. Well, uh, by can't, I don't mean you technically can't compute the low bound. I say that if you have a hundred of the landmarks over you in the United States, then for driving inside New York, I guess that the, 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 these landmarks will be useless. So maybe hierarchy by uh, rich oh, level okay, okay, will so give you some uh, yes, same tree that will be effective for the average case. Right. Or give or our local searches that the cheap uh, compared with distance searches that they are just not worth it too much. Uh, so this is true, but also you have to be careful because uh, remember your uh, potentials which are given by your landmark lower bounds have to be feasible. and. Uh, this, uh, if you use different set of landmarks with different vertices, they will not be in general feasible, and so you will lose optimality. So you have to be careful. It's, it's sort of hard to switch from one set of landmarks to another without using optimality. Okay, and also I just want to know that since uh, every vertex has a uh, high reach vertex nearby, this will be relatively small, so the qu your uh, quality of your lower bound will not be too bad, except uh, if you are going very close. But yes, so uh, but the, uh, the big reason for not having sort of separate set of landmarks with different vertices is you may lose visibility because in general uh, the potential is not consistent. More about three. With them, something like modern internet, then on top level we have each to each distances, but on lower level we have more like trees. <coughs> okay, so maybe you, you can do this. Yeah. But anyway, so let me continue. So this is sort of the effect of a storing fraction of landmarks. So here you store all data for 16 landmarks. Here you have 64 landmarks, but you store data only 
who won sixteenth of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, uh, so the, the interesting part is that storage requirements go down. And oh, by the way, this is the same graph as before. And sort of to see how robust things are, there are three sort of length functions on this graph. One is uh, travel time, another one is uh, distance traveled, and the last one is a unit where each arc on the graph has uh, length one. Okay, and as you can see, uh, the algorithm is robust in the sense that times don't change that much, and uh, space requirements don't change that much. And by going from here to here, you reduce your space requirement by about a factor of two, uh, and you win in actually in running time. And you win a number of scans. So you sort of uh, win both in time, in time and in space. And uh, so this is one thing. And another thing which is nice is that the algorithm is fairly robust, at least for these three natural metrics. Uh, this is the same for the graph of uh, Western Europe. And you can see that the, the results are very similar. So again, you sort of visit on the average less than a, a thousand vertices, and uh, running time is about one millisecond. Okay, and let me just run a demo. Uh, if it will run, so it would be nice to know which resolution uh, this projector is in. Uh, which resolution is uh, Let's see. Do uh, you but laptop switches to too. No, no, no I, I think I'll, I'll just make a okay. guess. I guess it's 1024. This is a, a demo which sort of, first of all, we are not really good at uh, writing uh, user interfaces and graphics, and also this demo runs, uh, okay, so I'll just write, uh, runs both on this and on a pocket device, and because of that, it doesn't use as many colors. And that's Okay, let's try again. Okay, so this is the graph of Western Europe, and this is for what uh, we have publicly available data, and uh, so you can try going, well, Paris to London. Okay, and it's an animation, so you can see that uh, what it visited, or you can go from Lisbon to and this is Berlin. And most paths in Europe go through Paris. See, this one does. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can go very far away. And actually, this algorithm doesn't really care that much. And also, the interesting part is it knows about ferries. So you can actually go from this island to <laughs> Norway, so but... By uh, passing Paris. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I said most pass, not all pass. And, but you also can see, so uh, the way this thing draws uh, the results is uh, it draws the red pass, which is the virtual pass. It's the pass in the shortcut, uh, shortcut graph. And then it expands virtual edges into real edges. And you can see that here, for example, this, remember we had this very local strategy of bypassing low degree vertices. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, this by you bypass a bypass, and you bypass a bypass again. And here you discovered a bypass from here to here. So you get some very global bypasses, or from here to here. So it works amazingly well. You have very few hops. And also you see that the so the search is uh, denser near the origin, but then it uh, gets sparser. But also, you, if I pick some points sort of in, in the middle of things, 
you see that your search goes essentially in a ball, right? It goes back a lot. So we can go to uh, uh, the algorithm with uh, uh, landmarks, and in this case, you see that the search doesn't go back as much. See, it's much more directed. Uh, and it's uh, actually it's not that much faster because this demo runs from a disk, and there's a lot of landmark data to read. So uh, it visits few vertices, but it's not that much faster. Okay. Okay, and another sort of interesting thing is uh, in the smaller graph, the one I talked about before, uh, you can uh, run other so, sort of slower algorithms. So this is the algorithm which just uses landmarks, but no shortcuts. So it's slower. <coughs> And it's, uh, it's good except, uh, so you get good lower bounds if you have landmark more or less behind. <coughs> so to trick the algorithm, you can put points sort of on the boundary away from landmarks. And then you can see the algorithm has to work harder. This is sort of a bad case. It doesn't have that, such a good sense of direction. Right, so it's much, much more. If you move this point sort of along the path just a little bit, you see that things get much better. Okay, and uh, let's see, this is uh, reach without shortcuts, so you sort of will see the algorithm discovering major roads. And you see that without shortcuts, it's uh, slow. Uh, so we can do the same thing with shortcuts. Um, but anyway, with, with shortcuts, as we already have seen before, it's uh, much faster. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the talk. Okay, so uh, there was some recent project in the progress during uh, a Dimex challenge, and sort of there the idea is that, uh, well, these guys talk about highway hierarchies, which are essentially uh, a discrete version of reach, so uh, you can think about uh, having vertices with moderate reach as a higher level of hierarchy than vertices with even higher reach as another level and so on. Uh, and uh, then it turns out that if you go high enough in, uh, if you consider vertices with only high reach with some threshold, this is a graph which is very loosely connected. And there is a small number of vertices such that, except locally, also the paths between uh, regions go through these vertices. So this, uh, what these guys do is they identify these vertices and just do all pairs of shadow paths on them. And this heads up things even more. So think about it as sort of a shortcutting everything with high reach. Uh, and uh, sort of, as I said before, uh, finding a, a, a for reach with shortcuts, uh, finding the shortest pass uh, takes about the same time as traversing it. In finding the shortest pass implicitly. Uh, here, it's an o over an order of magnitude faster. So you find impl uh, the shorter, implicit shortest pass very, very fast, faster than it takes you to traverse it in the original graph. Of course, in some cases, you may not need to traverse it in the original graph because for example, if you are doing driving directions, you can pre-compute driving directions for shortcut arms. And then you don't need to actually uh, output the original uh, graph. So in uh, on-road networks, this problem is sort of very well solved. Uh, but uh, of course, 
there are still questions of how to select good shortcuts. I think there is still uh, more room for improvement there because we are doing something extremely simple. Uh, and uh, then a more interesting question is on which graphs these techniques work well. It turns out that if you take uh, planar grids with random arc lengths, these techniques work also reasonably well, not quite as well as on road networks, but still they work. And this is interesting because in this case things are very uniform and there is no obvious sort of road uh, hierarchy. So it's sort of a little surprising that these techniques work. Uh, uh, Reach's work, it's less surprising that Denmark's work. Uh, and of course, a very interesting, as a theoretician, for me, a very interesting thing would be to prove that on certain classes of graphs, uh, these techniques work well. And a good start will be random uh, grids, grids with random, random arc legs. And we have some progress in this direction, but we don't have a proof yet. But a nicer thing would be that on you know, graphs with small doubling dimensions or, or something, these techniques uh, work well. There is some hope in that direction. There is a sort of simpler scenario which people in networking are using. So uh, they, there is a technique uh, used in uh, networks where people want to estimate delays between uh, two vertices. And the way they do it is very similar to what we do with ALT. They maintain a set of vertices which they call beacons, not landmarks. And everybody pings these beacons periodically, and so you know uh, delays to beacons, and then you use triangle inequality to estimate delays between arbitrary pairs of vertices. And uh, this context there is work by uh, John Kleinberg and Alex Lifkins, where they prove that if you have a graph with constant doubling dimension, uh, and I know, does it, everybody know what a con gra graph has a constant doubling dimension is? Okay, so it's uh, basically a uh, graph has a constant doubling dimension if every ball of radius R in that graph can be covered by a constant number of balls of radius R02. So it's a pretty fairly general uh, definition and they show that for those graphs if you select landmarks randomly, then uh, for almost all vertices you will have uh, some fraction of 1 minus epsilon vertices, you will have a constant uh, approximation for uh, distances. So there is some hope in that direction, but of course for us we need more. We need not only to prove that lower bounds are good, but we need also to prove that uh, then A star search will visit uh, much fewer vertices than uh, the actual algorithm, which is harder. But anyway, so it would be nice to have theoretical results in that direction. Uh, and uh, there are also interesting problems related to reach. For example, if you are talking about all pairs of shortest paths, uh, then uh, if you have a sparse graph, uh, there are n squared uh, of pairs of shortest path distances, so you cannot solve that problem faster than n squared. And uh, there are algorithms which solve it in time almost n squared. So there is little room for improvement. Uh, for computing reaches, there are only n values, so this lower bound doesn't uh, work. So maybe it is possible to compute reaches faster. And if not reaches, then maybe a good upper bound of reach on reaches. Again, we have this heuristic, remember I said that we are growing partial so this fast trees, it, uh, but we don't have a proof that it really works well. It would be nice to have an algorithm which computes exact or approximate reaches in um, maybe linear times polar log time or something like this, or even you know, n to 1.5 would be interesting. So there are lots of nice uh, theoretical questions. Mm -hmm. Questions and then, of course, there are very interesting questions related to dynamic graphs. So, uh, a good motivation is in many uh, cities now, uh, real time traffic information is becoming available, and of course, you uh, would very much like to know uh, the fastest path now given current traffic conditions. So, it's dynamic graphs and these techniques. Uh, uh, well, landmarks kind of work 
in the sense that if you compute uh, uh, compute distances with uh, or travel times with no traffic, lower bounds you get are still lower bounds if you have traffic delays. So they are still valid lower bounds, but it's uh, uh, they are worse lower bounds than one you could get otherwise. So uh, you are paying in performance. And with reach, it's very unstable. If you just uh, uh, you know slow down one arc, you can change reaches of many, many, many vertices. Uh, so uh, computing reaches dynamically is uh, a hard uh, question. Uh, but anyway, so uh, the, the basic uh, point I want to carry across here is that this is sort of mostly experimental work in the sense that uh, we, of course, can prove that this algorithm is run in n log n time or something uh, for query, but we suspect they actually run in something like log n time on the graph, the classes of graphs we're uh, interested in, but uh, proving it would be very interesting. Uh, so there are lots of theoretical questions to, to be answered here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's uh, it. So what are your questions? Yeah, so and what, what is the relation with the current? So you mean that more or less current, this uh, GPS devices use something like this or? Uh, uh, no, they, they somehow compute the, the, the direction. Yes. So how they do this? Uh, I said the Sorry? They are usually confined to a city. No, no, no. I, I said at the beginning that they have this base graph of, remember, mm -hmm. uh, so this, they do it approximately, but. Okay, so this is uh, the thing. <coughs> First, they have a base graph, which are major roads. Mm -hmm. And so when you want to uh, show this class, so we have this graph of major roads, and then we have some uh, S here and C here. You put sort of a local patch here and here. So this is gra a graph of uh, local mm -hmm. roads. Sorry, global roads. You also add local roads for some area. Mm -hmm. And then in this combined graph, which is still much mm -hmm. uh, smaller than the original graph, you find through this pass using uh, Dijkstra with Euclidean A star. That's what most current GPS devices do. And if you compare this with your um, better algorithm? Well, it's both slower and this is not guaranteed to find through this pass. Sometimes it finds. Yeah, so. But w w w w what is the real. real uh, so the main improvement of, of your approach is just making things faster or just the improvement in distance? So Both. Yeah, but is, is there really a case when you can, I don't know, make the distance twice shorter using the... Well, this, this depends on how... Uh, it's all okay. it's a quite practical question. Do you really hope to, 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 I don't know, to reduce the, the gas consumption by twice by using this better algorithm or not? Uh, so no, what, what no, kind no. of, of, of uh, redundancy you, you No, use? most uh, current navigation system will find uh, a pretty good path. Uh, they, so they may get you to a highway in their own spot and so on. Quality of the path is not too bad. Mm -hmm. The problem is that uh, as uh, they, they, it used to be that in your GPS device you loaded some state or some uh, local area or something. Mm -hmm. Now they usually come with uh, everything preloaded. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, algorithmically, it shouldn't, uh, but it uh, did get uh, slower. So mm -hmm. to deal with that, uh, people started to sort of uh, uh, be more aggressive in overestimating lower bounds and so on, and so quality suffered. But mm -hmm. still, uh, well, what we're saying is, look, you can solve these problems exactly and, and faster mm -hmm. uh, the current method. So there's no trade-off. You will not reduce ga gas consumption, but there is also sort of a uh, trust. If you don't trust that your navigation system gives you a good route, you may not use it as much. Mm -hmm. 